everyone to today's small business breakthroughs program and uh, I want to thank everybody for for jumping on here I think we're going to have a really interesting uh, discussion today and we're going to cover a, a variety of, of topic areas and uh, if you're not familiar with uh, the small business development center who is the uh, presenting organization for this um, let me kind of touch real quick on that obviously uh, Small Business Development Center has been around uh, for a number of years. It's actually a national program here in uh, Central Ohio. We are based at Columbus State Community College. And what we do is work with uh, entrepreneurs, small business owners, all the way from, I have an idea and I don't know what to do with it. I don't know anything about business to folks that have been in business for uh, a number of years who are looking to do some different things, you know, maybe looking to pivot, looking to grow, looking for financing, uh, sales, um, maybe uh, business certifications. We're going to talk a lot about that today with our, our guest. So uh, with that, I am going to also then play the uh, Chaz Fretel role and talk to you about our partner uh, with this program, which is the Dublin Entrepreneurial Center. Chaz is unable to be here today, but uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it, the Dublin Entrepreneurial Center is a uh, business accelerator, incubator program or facility in Dublin, Ohio. We as the uh, Small Business Development Center uh, are partnering with them on this particular program. I have uh, office space there that I meet with uh, business owners and different things uh, there in addition to uh, my space in uh, Columbus State which is where I'm at today and uh, what uh, the Dublin Entrepreneurial Center what I really like about that is that sure it's got uh, space you can get office space you know they have cubicles they have kind of uh, what they call hot spot pace places so Let's say that you're working at home, but you want to get out of the office, or get out of the house and do some things, or maybe you've got a, a full-time job and just looking for a small uh, space that you can kind of jump into, in and out of, but you're also looking for an address uh, for your business. Um, that could be uh, perfect for the hotspot. Now, what I like about the, uh, the deck is really uh, the community and, uh, the opportunities, the training, the partnerships, the variety of things that are available there. So again, we're there on a regular basis. They have uh, a lot of business owners that are there, got a lot of service providers. Um, Matt Adams from Dot the Eye Creative, who was on the show uh, you know, a few months ago, has a web business there. Got a lot of resources that can, you know, help you out, talk to you about your business, different things like that, and and obviously Chaz uh, Fratell, who's the manager. Chaz, uh, you know, is a business owner himself. He's been involved with a number of businesses, and uh, is a great resource for you. So I would encourage you to uh, check out the deck and uh, the uh, website. I know Bruce put some stuff in the chat. Uh, Deckindublin.com check out the website, check out some of the uh, things that they've got going on and uh, reach out to Chaz because I think he can uh, absolutely help you. So I wanna move on to the, uh, the program today. So those of you that have been involved with this uh, before know, my uh, request to you is uh, if you've got questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Uh, Bruce Walters, who is one of our uh, business advisors at the Small Business Development Center, is uh, monitoring that chat. I'll be monitoring the chat um, for questions and different things like that. So uh, feel free to put your stuff in there. Also, if you are here uh, live with us today, feel free to uh, introduce yourself, put some information about you, your business and uh, contacts. Maybe there's some folks that are looking for what you do that uh, would maybe want to jump on there. Also, we will be, uh, we are recording this and this will be uh, placed on our uh, SBDC website, which is Ohio SBDC at, uh, on YouTube. So uh, feel free to go check it out after the fact. And 
check out the other episodes there because again, we've had some excellent guests as we've gone through. So want to bring in today's guest. It is uh, Jesse Marks from uh, currently with the uh, Columbus Urban League uh, Minority Business Assistance Center here in uh, Central Ohio. And uh, Jesse has a long background in terms of assisting businesses, working with businesses in a variety of areas that we want to cover today. And uh, we also are going to be talking about business certification, uh, how you get certified, why you get certified, and what happens once you get certified. Because um, the uh, MBAC, which we call the uh, Minority Business Assistance Center, does a lot of work on the certification side. So we had uh, Deanna Barnett on uh, several months ago, and we wanted to spend a little bit more time talking about certifications, but we just got so involved in the conversation that uh, we just were able to touch the top surfaces of it. So thought it'd be great to have Jesse jump in here and uh, help us out with that. So what I'd like to start with is Jesse, if you want to kind of introduce yourself, um, anybody who went through the uh, website to uh, initially register, um, you know, would have seen your bio. And I, I like uh, your first sentence that you're a champion for the people. So, uh, so that's great. And I uh, got a lot of background um, that I think uh, will be really helpful to the folks here. So if you want to kind of introduce yourself and uh, maybe jump in, talk a little bit about the MBAC so people kind of understand uh, what's going on there. Absolutely, Mike. And uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, SBDC, for giving me the opportunity to come and share uh, a little bit of what I know about helping uh, businesses grow. So um, as Mike said, I'm the regional director for the minority uh, Business Assistance Center. We're housed here at the Columbus Urban League. Um, we have 18 counties that we are responsible for. Um, we go as far north as Morrow, Marion, and Knox County. We sweep through the uh, uh, Columbus and Central Ohio MSA, uh, Metropolitan Service Area, and go all the way down, basically if you're riding down 33, uh, to Athens and Washington County. We do have a satellite office as well uh, down at Ohio University at the Innovation Center. Um, so a, a little bit about me, you know, um, again, as Mike said, I, I, I do believe that I'm a champion for the people. You know, um, uh, th there's, no, uh, um, th th there's, there's no secret about it that, you know, um, I, I like to see everybody win. You know, um, uh, for me, life's not a competition, it's a journey. And, you know, if, if, if I can provide assistance uh, to, to have somebody else, uh, become successful, change their trajectory. I feel that I'm winning when I'm doing that for folks. And and again, it's 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 the authentic uh, me to to know that I just enjoy helping people, and seeing folks win. You know, um, at the end of the day, you know, um, our impact uh, and, and myself, uh, we're a resource to resources. You know, uh, partnering with uh, other agencies uh, like SBDC, and I can go on and name other ones that are in the ecosystem here. But just uh, again, finding ways to manufacture wins for folks is essentially what we do. You know, um, we provide one-on-one -on -one, uh, counseling, uh, technical assistance, um, coaching, access to capital, which we're going to have some more discussion about later on here today. Uh, obviously, the certifications. Um, uh, the uh, certifications will 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 be you know for the women's business enterprise, minority business enterprise, encouraging diversity and growth enterprise, which is Edge, and uh, and the veteran business enterprise. So uh, I call them the E's, right? So so everything ends with the E. And, you know, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is make sure that, you know, people can be, become, or the business that we support and help can become a GBE, a great business enterprise. So, you know, um, you know, really, it's kind of simple, you know, just, you know, trying to put the square peg in the square hole, Mike, you know, um, just, you know, I've been around a block a couple of times, you know, um, I'm a, I'm a reformed banker, you know, I spent most of my career in finance. Uh, I've done just about anything, you know, from retail banking, business banking, mortgage banking, you know, um, uh, investments, insurance. I'm still licensed in insurance right now. And I have a table because I have a full-time responsibility helping these businesses grow, right? You know, um, so, you know, I've done just about everything in finance with the exception of day trading and commodities, you know? Um, so, you know, I, I've got a, you know, wide range of knowledge, you know, I'm very transparent too when we're helping people out, you know, if I don't know the answer, let's go find it together, right? You know, um, or let me connect you to another resource that 
could potentially give you more concrete advice than I might even be able to. So that, that's kind of been a nutshell for us. Um, we're extremely busy right now, uh, helping people with the certifications. Um, good thing is, you know, uh, we're quasi-government, you know, um, the MBACs, because uh, we are one of uh, seven centers in Ohio. And, you know, just recently I heard, you know, some, some stats, you know, with the certifications, you know, why become certified? You know, if you want me to answer that one right now, um, it's because it can help your business grow. It can change your trajectory, you know? Uh, it can open you up for procurement opportunities, you know, um, on, on the private and public side. And uh, most recently right now that they've added, you know, some additional, um, you know, money sources, you know, with the, on, with the state in particularly, that is kind of a win-win for all business owners, right? You know, um, they just closed probably two million dollars in loans here recently, and the pipeline is still extremely full. You know, and and you can only get access to those loans right now. You know, if you are certified. I mean, I'm talking about zero percent loans. You know, I'm talking about one and a half percent loans. You know, um, with with very very favorable terms. You know, so you know one of the biggest reasons why to become certified. You know, grow your business and have access to capital because, you know, as we all know here, if you don't know. You know, uh, the number one, number two reason, you know, um, depending on what poll you're looking at for why businesses fail is they ran out of money, you know, that, that lack of access to capital, you know, um, and then I guess the other one would be, you know, that there was no market need for what they were doing. So you have to understand your market, <laughs> and then fund it properly, have that money sitting on the side for emergencies while you try to scale up, you know. So in that show, again, you know, I help people in the startup phase, the stay-up phase, and the scale-up phase. That's what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot for that. And uh, like you mentioned, I just want to reinforce that there are minorities business assistance centers. So I think you said you're one of seven mm -hmm. throughout the state of Ohio. So if you are not in the uh, areas that's being covered by the uh, Central Ohio office, then uh, you know there's a there's an MBAC in your area that can that could support you. And it's kind of the same thing with the SBDC. There's uh, a number of SBDCs around the state that also provide uh, business assistance and advising. Both of our organizations do work with uh, the small business owners, um, and we provide the, the advising services free of charge because, again, you know, we're supported uh, to do that. So um, we're, we're both involved with this particular ecosystem to really help these businesses grow. And uh, and I think that, uh, you know, we're excited that you're involved with the MBAC, Jesse, and that the MBAC is, uh, you know, it's a great partner for us because, again, you mentioned, you know, connection to resources and different things like that. So with the SBDC, you know, we can do work with entrepreneurs. We can do uh, kind of uh, connect with them, provide them advising and different things like that. However, you know, we know that the MBAC is experts in doing these certifications and supporting these certifications. So that's where we partner as opposed to, okay, let's reinvent the wheel and let's figure out how to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. When I think our offices are what, maybe a mile apart, if that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so I mean, it's, it's being able to make that connection. So, so let's, let's dive a little bit more into this, uh, certification because uh, I, I run into a lot of businesses that, that want to, you know, want to talk about getting certified and, uh, but they don't really have a good understanding of, of why. And you kind of touched on it, but, you know, with a certification, you know, really what you're doing is that you are telling a partner or an organization, we'll dive a little bit into that in a second, that uh, your business is what your business says it is. So that that, that organization, so say you want to contract with the government, they don't have to go in and do all the, the searching around. You know, you say you're, uh, you know, if you're a woman-owned business and you say you're 51% owned by, uh, by a female and that female is running the business, the, the organization you're contracting with can trust that that's actually true. <laughs> And uh, that makes, it, makes a, a big difference in, in terms of why. But uh, once you get 
Well, let's let's take so. I know that there's a variety of different. You mentioned a variety of different types of uh, certifications, but in general, I mean, what do what do people need to ex should they expect when they say, okay, I want to get certified, mm -hmm. and what should they expect to you know kind of the process to be in general? Oh, uh, great question. Thank you. Um, I, I will add one thing before I do that too. But, you know, the yeah. MBAX are also the only place where you can get certified and have that expedited. You know, so so if you are uh, bidding on a contract uh, on the public side, or, or if you're trying to get access to capital from the loan program or from one of the bonding programs that they have, um, we can expedite through the MBAC, and we are the only place in town, only game in town that's able to expedite state certifications. So uh, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, let everybody on the call know that. Um, so you know, again, to, why why become certified? You know, I, I've seen companies that uh, have the certifications and have the opportunities to, to, to get on large scale jobs, you know, with, uh, you know, some of the biggest construction companies in town, you know, uh, uh, and that's just on one side of it, but there's also, you know, uh, service providers, you know, that, that can look into our portal, um, you know, to, to become certified with uh, uh, projects that have that diversity and inclusion carve out. You know, um, the edge one is 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 the most popular one for where folks are trying to get certified. So if you have the edge, you know, a, a lot of the state funded projects, you know, have a mandate for that carve out on the edge side. Um, basically, the edge is, is if your net worth is $750,000 or less. If you're married and you're a millionaire, you kind of split that in half with your spouse. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Mike, Mike talked about, you know, own uh, ownership of 51%, but then there's also the, the control part. You know, um, uh, some people talk about the dirty word fronts and things along those lines. So, you know, there, there is an interview process and there is a site visit, things come along those lines to make sure that, you know, the company is owned, operated, controlled by that, you know, minority for the majority of the part of the business. Um, I, I've seen companies grow tremendously. You know, I, I've worked with one company. Um, for the last several years, and you know, um, I, I'll keep their name, you know, anonymous. But you know, I've seen this company grow 400% over the last five years. You know, during the pandemic, they're flourishing by leveraging those certifications. And if you have more than one, you know, we call it the unified certification, right? You know, and, and uh, this business owner, you know, hit the trifecta by by having an edge MBE and WBE, right? And and you know, it it, it creates a good story to tell. For, for what the companies and the public entities are trying to do to accomplish to make sure that it, that it is an inclusive environment. You know, um, and you know, studies have also shown that a more inclusive environment you know, uh, has better collaboration, you know, it has uh, a higher level of efficiency and productivity, and it's, it's, it's just good for everybody, right? So you know, we've been talking about why, why become certified, but there are so, so many benefits for it. Uh, you do have to work it, you know, because at the end of the day, when you get these contracts, you know, oftentimes it's the lowest bid and the most qualified still. So, so you still have to be competitive, right? But, but it does give you opportunity to gain visibility. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, drill down a little bit on that, where we talk about um, how a minority certified business, or really any certified business can kind of leverage so you know it's not necessarily that if i'm certified i've got to go bid on a major project with the city of columbus or franklin county or something like that right you know you mentioned i think you know it's partnering with some of these organizations so oftentimes you become a subcontractor maybe on a big construction project so you don't have to go build the crew stadium down here you can be part of that project and it also helps the general contractor often times because again um, a lot of these organizations are looking uh, to make sure that uh, you know it is inclusive it's diverse and things of that nature so having these certified businesses be a part of this is important absolutely you know, so you know to your point mike you know you don't have to be prime or the construction right. manager is right you know um, you don't have to be the number one vendor to supply all of the toilet paper to all of the public offices you know um, <laughs> across the state you know right. but if you have your hand in there you know it's really like from what I've seen a lot of folks you know 
you can be a tier two or tier three level subcontractor to go in on that project. So if it's a multi-million dollar project like the crew stadium, you know, I believe that like $33 million of that project um, actually went to minority owned businesses, you know? So, so the, you know, collectively, you know, uh, when you're doing that, you know, you got to think about what your, what your scale is, you know? So if you're really good at, you know, landscape, you know, there's multi-million dollar contracts out there for landscape, you know, and you can name any other one of the um, affiliated trades in the construction industry. You know, it also has professional services in there as well, you know, so, you know, um, I, I know, uh, you know, it's Black History Month, and, you know, I, I know a lot of these companies right now are, are, are busy enough all the way through the end of the year right now, and, and that's something to be said, you know, um, it gives them the ability to, to hire folks, you know, uh, and, and really what it does as well is it addresses the wealth gap for you. So, so if you have the skill to, you know, get the job done, then once you get that recognition, then you don't have to leverage the certifications anymore because just your brand is recognized. So, so again, it just gives you the ability to, to, to have equity. You know, if you think about it, equity and quality are, are, are sort of different, right? You know, um, equality is everybody that's saying look, Equity is making sure that somebody can look over that fence at the same time, right? So, 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 so kind of think about it, you know, if everybody has, you know, if, if we're trying to look at a ball game and uh, we're standing on a box, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a tall guy, I'm 6'3", right? You know, so if we're both standing on the box and I have one of my kids that's, you know, five feet tall and they're standing on the same box, I can put my head over the fence and look at it, but then we're equal because we have the same box up under us, but the quality is for me to have other boxes under my child so that they can have that same point of view perspective so that we can see the ball game at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah, that's great. And I'm, I'm glad you didn't say that, you know, I was the one that was five feet tall, so I appreciate it. <laughs> um, so uh, we do have a question in here um, from uh, Penny Frederick. Um, where do you recommend certified businesses go to bid on contracts and work? Uh, is there a database? Uh, is there a tutorial within the MBAC on submitting jobs? And I know you guys have a lot of resources online. Uh, I will say one thing that we can do, you know, obviously, you know, if you go to uh, CUL uh, backslash MBAC.org, you can register with us and get in part of our intake process. Um, and, and we have access to uh, Dodge, Dodge reports. Um, there's also a procurement channel directly through uh, the state of Ohio. Um, uh, obviously, we also partner with the PTAX, which is another one of our uh, brother sister companies. Um, that's a procurement. What's the acronym, Mike? It's a procurement Technical Assistance. Procurement Technical Assistance Center. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and there, there's a handful of those that are you know, across the state as well. So, so we kind of, so we kind of, you know, mirror our agencies, you know, in the same pockets, and, and that's where you can go and find those opportunities. Um, also bid boards, you know, and, and I would like to ask this person, you know, what do you do? You know, because because that, that way I can be more specific, you know, and, and figure out exactly, you know, where we can provide that assistance. Because, you know, I don't want to be, you know, generic and, and use a shotgun approach. I'd rather use a laser approach and, and know exactly what you're capable of, what your capabilities are. And then we can go down that path and, you know, try to find some opportunities for you together. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, there's, there's a variety of sources. And I think one of the challenges, you know, my experience is, is that the certification process is a certification process, but the actual bidding process, it's not a one size fits all deal. And so sometimes, you know, if you're dealing with the city, you kind of got to get on their database. If you're dealing with the state, you got to kind of get involved with their, you know, uh, you know, we should make him our co-host, but Dwayne Lee's on here from the city of Columbus. And uh, I don't know, Dwayne, you want to, talk a little bit about what how the city's process works because I know that there's a pretty extensive database you can get on a bid list there. Yeah, so here here at the city, you can go through um, uh, uh, MBE or WBE program. Um, it's like three or four steps and we can get you signed up to become a certified uh, minority or women-owned business uh, to do uh, to be activated with the city in regards to looking at contracts, getting first dibs, participating with contracts. And it's just, as Jesse said, uh, the process is not uh, very difficult to do. It's literally maybe 
four pages. Once you get through those four pages, then it'll be uh, uploaded, verified, and uh, we're really rolling at that point. Um, someone will reach out to you. Uh, I typically get uh, individuals' phone numbers and I directly just hand them off to people inside the city here so they have a direct contact as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and again, you don't have to figure this out yourself. That's why, you know, that's why yeah. Jeff is here. That's why we're here. That's why Dwayne's here, you yeah. know, and you don't have to worry about the alphabet soup. So if you forget <laughs> what PTAC stands left for, it don't matter because you come to one of us and we say, if you need to go to PTAC, we'll get you to the PTAC. We'll get you to the right people. So don't get, don't get intimidated by that kind of thing. You know, get, uh, feel free to, uh, you know, work with folks because again, they, all these organizations want to support you. All these organizations are looking for you to uh, be part of what they're doing. So, uh, you know, we can make those make those connections for you. So, I want to add another thing too. You know, we're talking about certification. So, obviously, uh, Mr. Lee is doing it with the City of Columbus. You know, uh, we do it on the state level, but there are also different places like you know the uh, Columbus Public Schools. You know, uh, they have an LEDE certification program, right? You know, um, so, so you have to get pre-qualified with them. You know, um, the federal government has an 8A program, right? That is, is the equivalent of that MBE certification that we have. Um, there's another one, uh, OMSDC, um, the Ohio, again, the alphabet soup, right? <laughs> you know, um, um, the, the, uh, the Ohio Minority Supplier Dev Development Council, right? They have a different standard for, for what they do. And, and a lot of their certifications are acknowledged by a lot of private companies. Right. So, you know, again, just, just knowing where you are, you know, and, and figuring out what your lane is, you know, so you can develop that market presence, uh, whether you are, again, a, you know, construction person or, 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 or professional services or, or uh, uh, maybe even like like a retailer. You know, um, I've, I've helped out food trucks, you know, um, that are certified, you know, uh, park on, you know, on state property and, you know, they're selling food to, to, to the state employees, you know, and, and that helps out these participation goals uh, across the state. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that, that kind of leads to one of the questions uh, Colin White put in the chat, you know, if you don't bid work, would you still recommend getting certified? Absolutely. The reason why is because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the access to capital, you know, so, so if you're not bidding jobs, you know, there, there's still a very, very attractive loan program. You know, uh, for, for the MBE loan program, you know, um, you can get anywhere from $10,000 to $45,000. That's a 0% interest rate through the state, right? So a lot of these things, you know, you still have the cash flow because they're underwriting. It's not just a guarantee because you're certified and you'll get it, you know, right. um, but, but you still have to, you know, give yourself as many options as possible, you know? And I, I know for a fact that, you know, it's like, most businesses, you know, um, less than 1% of minority businesses get approved for loans within their first year of business, right? And that's the other part about being certified. Being certified, you have to be somewhat established on the state side. So you have to be in business for at least a year, right? You, you have to have some revenue coming in um, just to show that it, it is an active business uh, because it does open you up for those opportunities that if you're established. So, you know, definitely, definitely become certified because you want to give yourself as many options or as many arrows in the quiver as possible. Right. And, um, you know, we've talked about minority certification, we're talking about women certification, women-owned business certification, but, you know, there's also veteran certifications. There's also disabled veteran certifications that, uh, you know, could be uh, important. And is there, so this is a question, and I don't know the answer to this, so I'm going to ask. So are there specific certifications yet for uh, LGBTQ? Mm -hmm. I think there is one. Um, yeah, I think there is too. And I, 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 to be honest with you, I, I haven't seen much of, it, much of that come across my desk, but I, I, I do believe that there is one. Okay. So again, if, you know, if that does uh, apply, if somebody is looking for something along that line, you know, let us know. We can, we can do the research and, uh, and figure that out. But I do believe that there are some uh, certifications and certainly some support uh, for that particular area too. Um, hey, Mike. So, yeah. 
one of the great things I think about this conversation, and I probably should have put it in the chat, but I didn't, but the amount of resources that your office has available today to Jesse, to me, to the banking world is really invaluable. I mean, um, the amount of resources that you can give a small business looking for, you know, contract support, uh, financing support, startup support um, is, is key to how businesses continue to operate, especially in this pandemic as we are right now. You know, uh, I think it's important that, you know, they have a sense of training. Um, I know when I was doing a lot of stuff at Columbus State, one of the things that we used to always repeat was, you have to know your business. You know, your business plan is for you, not for the bank. You know, because oftentimes you continue to see other people making money and you're thinking, well, I could do that, right? You could, I could jump over in that space. Well, in fact, you might be able to, but that's not your business plan. Your business plan is that you're going to make widgets. So you need to stick with widgets unless you change your business because that model that you've already established can actually hurt you more than any, uh, help you to continue on your road. And if you change it, it not only changes your business model, but it changes your taxes. It changes everything that you do in your industry. So it's important that, uh, I guess everybody on the line understand that Mike is just not a host. His center is actually, uh, it, it's literally probably one of the best things you could go through to get information. No, thank you. I appreciate that. And that, that's, a, that's a great point. You know, the, uh, the resources, you know, here, the resources that are available to small businesses. I don't think a lot of small businesses really understand what's out there. And, uh, and unfortunately, a lot of them kind of, lot of them just kind of go along and, and do their, their own thing and they get into problems that they don't need to get into. Right. And yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'm kind of talking over you, Mike, my apologies. And, and the services that we provide are free. Right. Yeah. right. So, you, know, you, you can go and talk to a business consultant and, and they can charge you for that business plan, right? You know, um, uh, a lot of people, you know, uh, uh, charge fees to, to become certified and they specialize in these things, you know. Um, but if you come see us, you know, the, the services we provide are on the house, right? Because your, yeah. your tax dollars are going, your tax dollars are helping fund these programs, right? That's right. That's right. So let me, uh, I want to do two things here. And Dwayne, why don't you hang in here with us for a second? Because I want to talk about, you know, you guys mentioned contract support. So you're certified, you get a contract with the city, the state, or you get a, you know, subcontractor. So what's what happens there? Because I've seen a lot of people they'll they'll get certified, they actually get a contract, and then they show up at our door. Well, we need to do this, but they're they're going to pay us in arrear, and we need to kind of get money and to do this. So from a contract support, I'm speaking on financially, but is there are there other things? And I know that for those of you who don't know, Dwayne does work for the city, but he also worked uh, in banking for a number of years. Was a great partner for us from a banking perspective. So I know he's been involved with this, but Jesse, you want to kind of speak to that a little bit? The contract support, you know, to your point, you know, um, uh, a lot of these contracts that you have, you know, you have to look at the clauses in there because some of them are pay, if pay, pay when pay, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so, so, so the devil's in the details, you know, so, so you need to know how you're going to float your cash so that you can, you know, keep your inventory, keep your supplies, have your equipment on site, you know, pay your people. Is the most important one, right? Uh, but but you need to be able to time these things out so that you can be successful on the project and have it completed on time and on budget. You know, and, and when you're looking at that, you know, it kind of goes into to the financing aspect of it. You know, collectively, I'd say Dwayne and I probably have you know a lot of years <laughs> under, under our belt <laughs> from, from, from uh, uh, you know um, being able to, to talk to people and you know it's kind of like trying to figure out you know what banks or what lenders will help your type of business as every bank is not their appetite to help out every type of nexus code or every type of industry right so so you got to understand you know who the players are for what for, for what type of business you have and then being able to get those products that can help you you know uh hedge against your receivables and manage that cash flow properly Dwayne, you got anything you want to add on that 
you're on mute, Dwayne. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Um, I think when, <clears throat> excuse me, when I think of uh, contracting, I'll, I'll cost usually comes to my mind. You know, what's the cost that is going to be incurred for the business owner? So you have to look at the different ways of how you can fund a contract. You know, if I come to Jesse's construction company and they are telling me, as Jesse said, they're going to pay me at the end. Well, how am I going to get the money to pay this up front? Because I don't have the cash, but I got the contract. Right. So you, you have to be open to alternative means of financing. I mean, you have to have, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, I want to use my business for my business stuff, but I want to use my personal for my personal stuff. Well, the business is you. <laughs> so there is no separation. You know, what you have available um, is your cash flow. So if the business is making, you know, two million dollars a year, you're making your cash flow personally from the business. So you want to be able to leverage your personal assets at times, which usually come into play sometimes. It just depends on the situation. Um, but in yeah. terms of the con you know construction contracts and things like that, they're a little harder to get, especially if you're only a year in business. Um, your reputation is definitely a key for how you move forward and then your longevity in the uh, current business cycle of what, what you do and how strong that part of the industry is. It's just like Jesse said, though, I, I think everything is really based on relationships. Um, that's the key. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's uh, let's try. I'm going to actually ask um, Fanny uh, Frederick. I don't know this person, but um, put a couple of things in the in the chat. Would it be possible for you to kind of take yourself off mute? Talk a little bit about what your business is. You say you have corporate meeting and event planner. And maybe we can just kind of talk briefly uh, with with us around you know, how we might be able to, uh, how you could potentially leverage some of these types of uh, things. So I'm all hey, Mike, if, Yeah. If I may jump in, it's Fene. Fene. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to take yourself off and jump in here, we, we you don't have to turn the camera on if you just want to do that. I can you hear me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi. Hi, everyone. Yes, my name is Fene Frederick, and um, my business is Indelible Affairs, and I am a corporate and meeting and event planner. So currently right now, I do work um, for a large company here in Columbus as a corporate meeting and event planning. But my business, I've been in business for over five years, where I focused on meetings, weddings, and also doing floral design work. So I'm kind of a one-stop shop where I have a list of vendors that I utilize to execute all of my events. Um, and I recently applied for my MBE certification and the women's minority business certification also. So I'm just waiting for that to come back. Um, but I am looking to expand out and focus more on corporate meetings um, within my business and hence why I applied for the certification. So that's kind of where I am right now, wanted to dive more into the corporate um, contract work for a lot of different businesses here in Columbus. So um, Jesse, uh, Duane, if you want to comment, so given what she's doing, um, as she gets her, her certifications. So you talked about uh, the uh, private sector areas, and I think a lot of people miss that opportunity, which would be ideal for what she's talking about, but uh, there could also be uh, governmental opportunities, I would assume. Mm -hmm. yeah. from, from me, I know that, um, I just put it in the chat line, the procure.ohio.gov, that's on the state side. You know, and, and you can search and search. And again, I, I would encourage you to talk to PTAC. I think that we already have PTAC's information uh, listed in the chat for everyone. Um, but, you know, on the private side, you, you have to be, again, more, more laser focused. So, you know, I'd say, for me, what company do you want to do business with? You know, and then you'd have to go and look for their supplier diversity programs. You know, sure. and search to, to where they are. And if you need help in making those connections and contacts, then you know that's what we're here for. We can leverage our name and our brand 
to help you get your foot in the door. Yeah. Okay. Wayne, do you awesome. have any comments? Um, I think it's exactly what Jesse said, um, but I think sometimes also you have to identify your space with some of these companies because they don't know how they can use you. Right. Um, the, you know, uh, uh, years ago, I worked at the convention center and just thinking of your business now, uh, I remember at the convention center, they used to order uh, tablecloths things like that, That's an, that could be an extension of your business to help open the door to now where they're not just ordering the tablecloths, but they're having you to actually set up the tables, flowers, silverware, you know, all the dining for all the events going on, which then can lead into the Hyatt as other additional opportunities. Yeah, I think that that's, you know, that's, that's a great point. I think both are great points. I mean, as, as you think about where you want to go, then, you know, let's, let's think about how you can uh, leverage some of these uh, opportunities to uh, increase your sales. Cause that's really what we're doing. You know, we keep saying, okay, contract this and con I mean, and really it's sales, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, there's a, there's a process and things of that nature, but I mean, you're increasing your revenue by uh, jumping in there and, uh, and doing this kind of work. So, uh, you know, it, I think it can really be applicable to a lot of different businesses that may not think that it's applicable to them. Right. Thank you all. Thank you both. Sure thing. Sure thing. Um, so I don't know if we know the answer to this. So uh, which bid procurement website would be best to find bids for police dogs? I'm not sure if it's buying police dogs, training police dogs or whatever, but um, you know, I mean, if we're thinking about, yeah, but if you're thinking about, I don't know, again, uh, so, I mean, but again, thinking about public sites, so City of Columbus, I mean, you know, jumping yeah. on there because they, the uh, Division of Police is the City of Columbus, right? <laughs> so, you know, that's how they're getting their stuff. I just you. saw... Um, not, I'm sorry, Mike, I, I definitely didn't mean to cut you off, but I just saw something on the news where they were seeking uh, police dogs. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, the training for it, uh, it might have been the training for it, but you're absolutely right. I mean, think about it like this. When, when I first started, and I'm, I'm just going to say some time ago mm -hmm. in banking, um, I remember going to a class and the guy said every possible need that an individual has, somebody should be creating a business for it. So a few years later, and I was, I was in banking and I'm sure everybody on the line knew about this place, but there was a um, caterer that opened up in Polaris where they catered dessert food for horses, dogs, cats, everything of that nature. And, you know, everybody, no one thought it would take off as well as it did. Well, it took off tremendously. And they would make pies and cakes for the quarter horse finals that were here down on uh, the fairgrounds. Right. And it grew so big that they, um, I want to say one of the officials ended up buying it and moving it to a warehouse. And he was sending the cakes and desserts and stuff out frozen. So he didn't have to have that that big of a retail location. But you have to think if they can sell frozen cakes to horses to <laughs> eat, that's a market that no one ever thought about that actually was productive and is still doing well. So everything has a market. You just have to be dedicated and willing to try it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, uh, I think, again, a lot of people don't realize how they can leverage uh, certifications. And, uh, you know, so they don't. <laughs> it's the thing. So you don't know what you don't know. So they just don't do anything. There's a correction on that. He, he didn't say police dogs. He said supplies. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, I mean, that's the police dog thing is a great point, too, because, again, you know, if you were doing something with police dogs, whatever that is, you know, 
there are opportunities to kind of do things through, you know, municipal governments and state governments. But by understanding if that were the case, by understanding and setting your goals, like you said, then you can start identifying the opportunities. The permit website specifies bids for supplies. You know, um, again, I'll put the link in there for you on the state side, you know, on, on, on the private end, you know, you just have to, you know, make some phone calls. We, we, we can help come up with a strategy for you on there. But oftentimes when we're talking about, you know, uh, people, you know, having that, that um, being immersed into to their industry, you got to think that there's two different ways. You have a vertical market and a horizontal market, right? Mm -hmm. So, so the vertical market is specific. So if you're selling barber supplies, Mr. Daughter, you know, you, you may want to look at industries that have a need for that, you know, universities, hospitals, you know, um, um, uh, corrections facilities, you know, things along those lines on the vertical side, the horizontal, you know, horizontally, you know, um, I, I don't know if there's a, a, a website for it specifically, but you just have to go and look at who do you know that can help you talk about your product to folks. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as we I'm going to wind down here in a minute, but I just wanted to uh, touch a little bit more. Again, this has been been great. So I know there was a couple of issues that maybe we didn't cover today, but, uh, you know, this is an important issue and uh, it's really valuable. Jesse, do you want to talk about, I know we're still in the planning phase, but I know we're all committed to doing this. Um, during Small Business Week this week, this year, which uh, in our case is going to be May 2nd through May 6th, we're talking about doing some uh, procurement training, kind of starting a process there. And you want to talk a little bit about that? For the, for the procurement training for National Small Business Week? Yeah, those things we're, we're working on, yeah. Yeah, what we're, what we're doing um, um, and collaborating with the uh, Columbus Chamber of Commerce is, is we're going to carve out, you know, specific areas to where, you know, we've got retailers and, and, and service providers and, and, and professionals in one lane. We're looking at another one for the vertical with people in the technology field, another one with logistics and transportation, last but not least, the construction industry. So what we're trying to do right now is match up entrepreneurs to companies, public and private, to talk about, you know, uh, uh, their pitch, you know, uh, you know, getting the information out because every one of those industries is, is totally different in your approach to how you're going to go and find those procurement opportunities, right? So just, just knowing that we are that resource to resources, we're bringing it together to formalize it, to build a cohort. And really what we also want to do and accomplish out of this is, is, is have it set up to where uh, you small business owner, you know, you micro business owner, you can have a mentor relationship with some of these bigger companies or even come together with some joint ventures of people that have a similar business or model as you to where it's not a competition again. Everybody can eat, everybody can win. Maybe you can join a, a form of joint venture and come together and you can go and bid on a larger project, a larger job, just by having that joint venture, just being able to be in the know. So, you know, procurement opportunities, procurement fairs are always excellent opportunities to network. You know, and then it, it, it's critical mass when you, when you have that follow-up component when you're done uh, by, by making those introductions. So. You know, thinking about the different industries and how you can specifically go and attack those for the companies that are in there, and then even on the public side as well. Absolutely. So what we're we're looking to do is um, Small Business Week. The SBA Small Business Week is uh, May second to May sixth. I think it might start actually on the first, but um, that May second is Monday. So uh, Small Business Development Center, the MBAC, and uh, the Columbus chamber are working together for that week we're going to be doing one some training on how to do it and uh, we're going to talk about certifications more uh, Jesse and his team uh, the chamber is going to talk about kind of that that networking and pitching that that's involved and we're going to talk about some of the funding uh, pieces to that and those will be virtual those will be the Monday Tuesday Wednesday and then Thursday, we're going to actually start diving into uh, how to uh, work with some of these entity, entities. So we're going to have, uh, I think Thursday, we're talking about having uh, 
how to work with um, which one the public entities I think yeah, Thursday. Thursday and then Friday, and then Friday we're going to talk about uh, working with private entities so uh, these is all going to be free it's going to be a great resource I would encourage you if you're interested to uh, go ahead and um, you know keep plugged into the MBAC keep plugged into uh, the SBDC getting our, our newsletters from both organizations and uh, in the Columbus Chamber uh, for when uh, we open up uh, registrations. But again, these are going to be free to you because we want you guys to understand how to do this. And we want you to be able to leverage these opportunities and we want you to be successful. So um, as we uh, kind of get to the end, um, first of all, uh, you know, Dwayne, as always, uh, appreciate you. Uh, you being here, uh, like I said, uh, maybe we just need to make Dwayne permanent co-host and uh, go there. Um, and then uh, Jesse, again, I, I really appreciate uh, you jumping on here and I appreciate the things that I think you're doing, you specifically are doing um, in the community to uh, you know really support small businesses and different things like that. I think the uh, MBAC is a, is a great resource and I think it's a the, the one here in Central Ohio is a, is a great resource. And I think it's a stronger resource because you're involved with it. So uh, we, uh, we certainly are looking forward to being able to do some things. And uh, want to kind of get to the, the last question, the last question I always ask uh, Jesse uh, to you, what is one thing you would recommend the, the people that are uh, on here live or the folks that come on to the YouTube channel later, what's one thing that you would recommend that they do between now and midnight tonight to help their business? Excellent question. Um, I think something that you can put some thought process into, you know, is, is think about uh, Mr. and Mrs. Business Owner, um, who your board of directors is, you know, who, who can you go to, for, to to seek counsel, right? You know, um, who do you have around you to help support your business when you have questions, when you want to grow, when you have challenges, you know? Um, and, and I think of, you know, it doesn't have to be a formal board of directors, you know, but you know, who's your insurance agent? Who's your financial advisor? You know, who, who's your lawyer, right? Who's your accountant? You know, um, who, who's your mentor, right? Everybody, everybody that's in business should have a mentor or somebody that they can talk to, right? You know, uh, outside of just us, you know, um, you know, who's the smartest person that you know, right? You know, everybody has an uh, in-law that, that may want to give you great advice all the time, you know? So you, you got to think about who are these people around you that help insulate you and protect you and can give you wise counsel, you know? Write those names down. If you have gaps in those areas, start looking at research to find some, or then when you identify those gaps in that area, get a hold of one of us, come and talk to us so that we can help you, you know, the gap right because because all of those things are essential and critical for you to be able to grow your business and make them make smart moves you know so um definitely identify who that board of directors is for you and then after that figure out where you need to fill the gaps in again and then come and talk to us and we can help make those connections for you yeah that, that's that's a great point because i think a lot of people don't realize when we talk about their team i sometimes like when our startup programs and different things like that we'll talk about you know developing your team well they think it's like an internal team it's your employees and stuff which is part of it but i mean really you know you can have more of an informal team that's like you said that's there to support you can give you uh, wise counsel um that are that is your go-to when something comes up in that particular area so i think that's a that's an excellent point so um got to with, add to my yeah your banker who's your banker right so right access to capital you know uh who's your banker that's also a very very important one so don't leave that one out absolutely absolutely so again um want to thank uh jesse for you uh jumping on here again uh really appreciate uh, your uh input we look forward to continue to work with you uh going forward um encourage everyone to uh Go check out the uh, Minority Business Assistance Center on their website. Sign up for their newsletter. They have a lot of great resources there that uh, are supportive to, uh, to businesses. And uh, obviously, I'll encourage you to uh, go to our website, uh, 
sbdccolumbus.com and check out the resources. We're actually going to have a uh, website upgrade coming. So uh, look for some exciting stuff to uh, happen there. And uh, with that, again, I want to thank everyone. I want to wish everybody the best of luck in their uh, business adventures and uh, ventures as we go forward. And uh, thank you very much. And you guys have a great day. Thanks. Thanks everyone.